Alright, so 19.3. Wow. Um, lot to discuss about. So first off, just want to say welcome. Uh, I am Justin Ragazzi. It is good to be back for week three. And to my right and to my left are very handsome, distinguished gentlemen. Great you know, curse bomb. Yeah, great curse bomb. Jumping in on that. And Pete Hitzman. And uh, we are going to give you guys kind of the breakdown and analysis for 19.3. In addition to that, we are going to go into our head-to-head -head action with our guy in the female athletes. So, with that, I uh, want to go ahead and acknowledge our sponsor for this week, which is uh, Cortland Mobile Grill. They'll be here for our throwdown tomorrow night. Uh, they are going to be purveying uh, some delicious chicken wings, and so they'll be parked right by the tires. So make sure you bring some cash and your uh, credit cards available and uh, come hungry. In addition to that, we will also be accepting many food donations because there will be plenty of hungry folks there. So, events start tomorrow at uh, 6.30, so please be there and uh, be willing to participate in uh, the festivities. So, let's talk about 19.3, shall we? Yeah. Most yeah. of you guys witnessed the spectacle that went down uh, a couple minutes ago, but uh, let's just do a recap of the watch. So, 10 minutes. We have a uh, 200 feet overhead dumbbell lunge. The guy weight for this is uh, 50 pounds. Ladies, you'll be doing 35 pounds if you choose to go RX. Then as soon as we are done with the 200 feet of the lunge, we go into 50 dumbbell box step ups. The height for the guys, 24 inches. Ladies, you're going to be doing 20 inches. Then we go into the, uh, I think the game changer on this one, strict handstand pushups. Uh, different, uh, um, this year is supposed to not go into a height, but we've got to uh, do this in a box area, so that's uh, going to be different. We'll talk about that. And if we make it through the 50, we do 200 feet handstand walk. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. So I'll toss this over to Greg. Um, Greg, why don't you give us some tips of performance or you know, points of performance and kind of the pacing strategies and so forth for, uh, for this walk? Uh, so we start off with the, uh, the overhead lunge. Shoulder intensive movement, holding an overhead balance. Uh, you're gonna wanna manage how long you can hold something overhead like that. If you know that it's gonna fatigue, and especially you're gonna use your shoulders later on, break it up more than you think. Maybe every 25 feet you switch arms. Maybe it's every 50 feet. The other thing to that is um, make every step count. You wanna go fast enough that you're always moving forward, but if you go too fast, you will stumble on these. There's a lot of balance and coordination uh, we saw some good strategies with the box step ups, putting it on your shoulder, saving the grip a little bit was, uh, looked like a very beneficial strategy to me. Um, and then just making sure you stand up on the box. I think that's just grunt work that gets us to the meat of the workout, which is going to be the, over, uh, the, uh, the handstand push ups. The scaled option for this is with a, a five inch deficit. If you have an RX, obviously this is a strict movement. It's going to fatigue very quickly. You want to make sure that you're doing rep numbers here that are going to allow you to come off the wall, take a short break, and get back up. If you go all the way to failure, odds are you're going to stop there and only get a few more reps at that point and, and kind of be stuck. If you get through that, it's just do your best on a handstand walk. We didn't even see the top athletes that were competing tonight make through that, and the bit that they made it through, they struggled mightily on. So. At that point, it's just it's just gravy from there. If you make it to the handstand push-ups, do your best on the handstand walk. That's my thoughts on it. Pete, do you have anything else to add on? I think there's going to be a couple of surprises for people, especially if you've never done walking dumbbell overhead lunges before. Not a super common movement, but a surprisingly high skill movement. Balancing something heavy over your head while you're in a dynamic forward and oscillating motion is, is uh, a game changer for your central nervous system. Also, people are going to be surprised how far 200 feet is. Doesn't sound like a lot on paper. Um, you feel like you can do anything for 200 feet, but you're going to get about 150 feet into that and go, really? Really? I'm still going. Um, to, to echo what, uh, what Greg said, the small muscles in your shoulders fatigue very quickly, right? So you're going to want to guard those against fatigue um, as the workout wears on. Excellent points. I concur with all of that. So, <laughs> I have nothing else to add because you guys are so super smart. So let's go ahead and talk uh, the women's matchup for Friday evening. We have Sky Murray Brook going against Megan Holtz. Uh, this is going to be a pretty intriguing matchup. Um, 
Pete, I'll shoot it over to you first. What, what, uh, what do you think is going to be uh, – let's, let's backtrack it a little bit. Let's talk about the strengths for these athletes. What, what, what are your thoughts for both Sky and Megan? Sky and Megan both do very well uh, under pressure, right? So I've seen them excel in workouts where, um, where they have sort of the attention on them. Good thing they're going to have plenty of them as screaming horde of fans in here uh, on, on Friday night. Um, I think pacing is going to be a challenge for both of them. It's going to be really – hard not to go out really fast um, and, and fatigue those shoulder muscles that you're going to need further on during the workout. So um, if I had to give an edge, I'd probably go Scott. Greg, your thoughts on the matchup? Yeah, I think, I don't think there's like a clear, a clear difference in this workout. I think that, um, I think one thing I really like about Sky when I watched her workout is that she is kind of has the ability to turn her turn her brain off and, and just kind of go endure some uh, some capacity. So the the beginning phase here where we're doing lunges and doing step ups, I could see her going pretty fast on that, maybe building up an early lead on that. What I'm not sure about is who will have a better time with the handstand push ups. That's going to be kind of where I see this could go either way, and um, you know I'm gonna. I'm going to lean towards towards Megan on that one, if, if for no other reason than to, than to go the opposite way as Pete. <laughs> so. I think you both bring up interesting points. I think uh, coming out of the gate uh, pretty fast is it probably going to be a huge different, difference maker. I know that both uh, Sky and Megan are fierce competitors, and so just kind of really setting that pace and not overdoing it. Um, and it kind of brings up to the next point, the tiebreaker is, uh, you know, uh, the final box step up, uh, the time on that would be the tiebreaker on that, end, as well as the final handstand push up if we get to that point. So uh, it should be interesting, um, but I have to choose uh, one or the other. So I'm going to have to go with Megan on this one as the uh, as the reigning uh, queen. Uh, was that queen? Sheriff? First, first, first lady of freedom for the 6 a.m. class. Assuming she's doing a very good job on that. Um, sorry, Sky, I know you want to make Moybrook memories or hashtag Moybrook memories, but I'm going to go uh, with Megan on the edge on this one. So there are our women's matchup. So let's go ahead and introduce the men's matchup, which I think will pretty much be a very, uh, I think this will be kind of the, uh, the main event, so to speak. So we've got Chris Downing going against Eric Grant on this, and I think this is probably going to be uh, a pretty solid matchup. So, Greg, I'll toss it over to you. Um, what about this workout? Let's talk about the strength of this workout for these guys. What, what, what do you see? Uh, Chris, Chris and Eric are both uh, very strong athletes. Are, is Jimmy not throwing down? Jimmy is not. Or? Jimmy had a um, had a okay, committed pop up. Okay. Yeah, he got caught up, so he's not going to get his little uh, picture frame. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so it sucks to be uh, you, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, going back to Chris and Eric, um, I think both athletes will do uh, very well. I think body weight movements, like a handstand push up, like a lunge, like a step up, bode very well for both athletes. Um, where I see a difference happening in this workout is I, I think that uh, I think that Chris will be able to sustain a little bit higher pace than Eric will. I think Eric will be able to maintain the workout. I think he'll do a good job. I, I, I have my money on Chris on this one going a little bit further in the workout. Um, just from, uh, I think he can sustain um, the handstand push-ups a little bit longer than, than Eric will be able to. But I think both athletes are highly capable. And they're athletes who, if they get to the handstand walk, I think we could see some handstand walking um, at the end of the workout. Pete, I'll toss it over to you. It's, uh, it's always a fun matchup when you have two athletes who are uh, opposite strengths going up against a workout that favors neither of their strengths opposite. Right? Like I always say Chris Downing's lungs go down to his kneecaps, and uh, Eric Grant just moves very well, and he has very short ranges of motion by virtue of being physically compact. Uh, so on the face of it, you would say, well, if we get to the handstand push-ups, Eric Grant, short range of motion, bang, bang, bang. But Chris Downing's got those lungs. Um, on this one, I think I want to give the nod to Eric only because of that range of motion thing. I think once they get to the wall, every time Chris Downing has to do a handstand push-up, it's like a mile down and a mile up. So that's going to wear him out really, really fast, I think. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a gunfight. Yeah, I would agree with that too. I think it. Uh, I think it. This is man, 
hate it. We'll boil it down to the handstand push-ups on this. And I think uh, I agree with you, Pete. I think uh, having that short range of motion favors Eric, uh, but it also depends on uh, Chris's capacity on uh, being able to keep up. I will say this: what Eric has that Chris Downing does not have. Two things: number one, a tackle kill, and number two, the, the screaming eagle. So I am going to, I'm going to put money on the fact that Eric is going to come in tomorrow night with both of those on, and uh, and about ten thousand pounds of freedom right behind him. So um, I'm going to put my money on Eric. I think it's going to be close, but I'm going to put my money on Eric. So he would get the workout that's fifty percent upside down. He would, and I think <laughs> this this favors him. So. I promise you, folks, uh, you're going to want to see this one, especially because uh, Eric is going to wear the Ted Tactical Kill and the Screaming Eagle and represent the 6 a.m. crew very well. Um, so, yeah, guys, any other any other thoughts on uh, on tomorrow or this the workout and the, the, the throwdown? This is the third year in a row that Eric will have be will be going uh, in an open workout at the throwdown that has handstand push-ups in it. He went up against me <laughs> the last right. two years. On a workout that had handstand push-ups. It's like he's got so a direct line. Every year <laughs> is a handstand push-up throwdown workout for Eric Grant. So he should be getting better at this, right? I would, you, I, would, think. I, I would think so. <laughs> but I'm excited for this one. This, this one would be uh, pretty good. So that is our uh, picks. That is our analysis for 19.3. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, enjoy the, uh, the content that we're providing. And I uh, just want to thank our sponsor again for coming out, Cortland Mobile Grill. Uh, again, they're going to be parked out by the trucks, uh, or by the tires. Um, my right, your left, depending on where we're at looking at this. Um, <laughs> so they'll be providing the chicken wings. And again, uh, bring your food. Um, Christy Swagger, please bring those cinnamon rolls again because those were tasty treats. And um, yeah, one other thing too. Uh, we are doing our hashtag challenge. Uh, we have five hashtag ch hashtags. If you haven't seen them on the Facebook page, just make sure you tag us on all your, your social medias and then put the hashtags on there. Um, this is just an opportunity just to spread the word and uh, just kind of try to get uh, out in the community and try to uh, be a better influence, especially in the Beaver Creek area. So uh, we hope you guys take heart on that. Um, one other thing too, I'm feeling very saucy today since we're kind of having a uh, freedom themed kind of workout tomorrow. Um, so these amazing Freedom shirts, I'm going to uh, mark down 17.76% off. Uh, so yeah, you want to make sure you grab your Freedom shirts for tomorrow. So we have plenty of stock. So for the Freedom shirts, tomorrow only. Uh, so yeah, get them while they last. So hey, that's all we have today. Again, thanks again for making us part of your uh, your evening, morning, or however long this uh, video plays for. So uh, yeah, Greg, Pete, excellent work. Great work. See you guys tomorrow night. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Good luck. Good luck.